All right, nerds. So today we're going to talk about alloys and how we use them and why we use them. Like, you know, why their properties are allowed to do certain things. So the dot point we're covering today is this one here. So describing the common use of alloys and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So before this, you already know that the physical properties of metals um, they're often related to the lattice structures and the metallic bonding within that lattice. Um, and what we want to do by the end is we want to be able to describe both substitutional and interstitial alloys and outline the uses of different alloys. Okay, so first off, the basics. It's essentially a pure metal, which we call the major comp uh, component, um, with another element added into it. We call that the minor component. Okay, so alloying is the process of making an alloy, of mixing them together. You usually use heat. And here we have a phase diagram. A phase diagram is cool. Um, so phase meaning state, okay, so solid or liquid, and here down the bottom we have the percentage, the, in this case this is cupro nickel, which is copper nickel, so the percentage of copper and nickel involved, alright, straightforward, um, so that goes across from zero nickel to 100% nickel, so all 100% copper, so you switch those around, they invert, and here's the temperature that it goes, so here it is as a solid, okay, here it is as a liquid, and this is that stage in between where it's melting. Um, so it's a solid solution and a liquid solution. Now, yeah, so this is it. Like, this is cool. Um, here we have, so we can see as we get more and more nickel, so it starts off at just the copper melting point, and then they blend. Like, and they blend fairly seamlessly too, um, to right up to hint. So we've got like 100% nickel, and that's the nickel uh, melting point, which is pretty cool, like I said. They blend really well. Anyways, that's a that is a a phase diagram. So it's a graph, and you just you've coloured in different sections of it, and they're awesome. They're one of my favourite types of graph. So an alloy is a mixture. Okay, it's just it is what it is. So they can be homogeneous, so the same throughout, or they can be heterogeneous, so different throughout. And these are what we call substitutional or interstitial alloys. All right. So a substitutional alloy is the homogeneous one, um, and it's the most common by a long shot. So, this one happens when the, the, the atoms of the elements or the particles are of roughly similar size. And in the lattice, like we see here, the minor component just, it substitutes in. You know, so it takes the place of, of an element from, uh, sorry, of the, of the major component's elements. Um, cupra, nickel, brass, they, they're good examples of this. And again, that's also the most common one. Interstitial alloys, not the most common but very, very important. We use these a lot, and you'll see in a second. So you've got distinct regions within the crystal lattice, so that makes it heterogeneous. So even though we might look at it and it looks the same throughout, um, if we look at it on a crystalline area, there are different areas. And you see how you've got, like, one there, one there, and one over here, and they sort of exist in between, like they're in between the two. Um, so they're in between the elements, so that's why they're interstitial, so they fit in in the little hole there. Um, so not the most common of alloys, but definitely one of the most important, because that's what steel is. So steel is essentially iron and carbon, and we've got different types of iron, different types of different things get put in with that as well, but iron and carbon are steel. So these change the properties, and we've seen that with a phase diagram. Okay, so lattice defects. That's what we're essentially we're creating. We're creating a lattice defect, which is just a change in the lattice crystal structure. And this is where the change in properties come from. So you can have a color change, like copper tends to be a, a semi pink color. And if we add zinc to it, we get brass, and this is yellow, which is weird because neither of those are yellow. Um, hardness, so steel, which is already an alloy, plus tungsten, actually makes it a lot harder than mild steel. Um, we can change the malleability of it. So just the carbon in steel, so iron plus carbon, um, Carbon's not malleable at all, really. It, it snaps. And so we have a much more rigid bit of steel if you've got more carbon in it. So the more carbon, the lower the malleability, malleability or the higher the rigidity. That's straightforward. Um, the electroconductivity, so cupro nickel, which is copper and nickel, that's what we use for our um, pipes. And it's not near as conductive electrically as just straight copper. Melting point. Steel is will melt at a lower temperature than steel plus molybdenum which is the mb 
And this is what happened here. So this is a cannon from the Second World War. Uh, First World War, sorry. And what the Germans would do... No, it must be Second World War. What the Germans would do is they would line these up on the borders of Germany and lob shells at different countries 100 kilometers away. Like, really powerful cannons. Um, when they first started building and testing these things, though, they could only really fire for about two hours, and then the cannon would literally melt and droop. Um, so it would hang down here. What they did was, though, they worked out that if they sprinkle some molybdenum in their steel when they're making it, it would last for another... 10 or so hours before it starts to melt so they would fire it for 8 hours let it cool down and then just start firing again and these went around on the backs of trains these were pretty rad but yeah so that's that's what we're going there they, they were the big bertha guns alright so go do now this is what I want you to do I want you to produce tables that show the percentage components of particular alloys of steel brass and solder okay their properties and what this means for their uses um, for those of you who are paying attention, check out the textbook. All right, and that's us. So I hope.